Hello Patriots, today is October 17th, 1777, and welcome to Liberty's Live at 5, a show where we bring you the latest news on the colonists' fight for freedom. I am Alizy Lorena, and I will be your anchor tonight. As you know, the American colonists have been in a war against the British called the American Revolution for more than a year now. We have a jammed packed show to get to, so let's get started. Our first segment is Off the Word Wall with Saman Kudia and Landon Tamborelli. Here are Saman and Landon reporting. Hello everyone and welcome to Off the Word Wall. I'm Landon Tamborelli, the Loyalist. Today we will be talking about Patriots and Loyalists. Let's hand it over to the Patriot, Saman Kuda. I'm a Patriot, which means I am an American colonist who believes the, Briti- the colonists should be free from the British. I think that the American colonists should come together and form our own country and not be ruled by anyone. I am a loyalist, which means I am an American colonist who believes that the colonists should stay as citizens of Great Britain. I think that we should all follow Britain's laws and stay together as one big country. Hey loyalists, why do you want to stay part of Great Britain? I want to follow the British rules and stay part of their country because the colonists receive protection, weapons, and supplies from the British. The British let us stay in the colonies and they helped us survive during tough times. Hey Lord Patriot, why do, you, why do you think the colonists should form their own country and be free from Britain? I think the colonists should be free from should form their own country and be free from Britain because we are not treated well by them. The British are bossing us around. They are treating us badly without even knowing what is, what life is like here in the colonies. So it would be better if we were just in charge of ourselves. The American colonies would make a great country one of these days. That's all, That's from, all from us. us. I'm a patriot. And I'm a loyalist. Back to LZ. Very informative segment, Simone and Landon. To really understand what is going on in the colonies during this revolution, it is important to understand that each colonist has decided to be either a patriot or a loyalist. That's why the war is so terrible, because it just turned into neighbor against neighbor, friend against friend, and in some cases, even family against family. Where do you stand? Are you a patriot or a loyalist? Up next, we have a field report about an amazing young lady. Now let's turn our attention to Sybil Ludington, a young girl who surely will go down in history. Here is Maya Romanchik reporting. Hello, my name is Maya Romanchik and we are right in front of Sybil Ludington's house in Dutchess County, New York. Sybil is a 16 year old girl who has a heroic tale to tell our viewers. She did something amazing for our country. Your father told you some information yesterday. Would you like to share it with us? Hi, my name is, hello, my name is Sybil Ludington, and yes, of course. My dad asked me if I would be willing to ride my horse to warn his troops that the British were coming to attack Danbury, where the Continental Army had a, had a supply depot. It was my duty to inform all of the militiamen under my father's command that the British were com- coming. I had to ride my horse from Dutchess County, New York, all the way to Danbury, Connecticut, to warn them, which is a very long distance. Wow, you are so brave for agreeing to do that. How many miles did you ride, Sybil? It must have been a lot since you rode all the way from New York to Connecticut. On April 26th, I rode about 40 miles in a terrible rainstorm. I rode all night long, which also made my journey, the journey difficult because of how dark it was. You are amazing, Sybil. Have you ever heard of Paul Revere? In 1775, he also rode his horse all night to warn the people of Lexington that the British were coming. But he only rode 12 and a half miles, and he was 41 years old. Oh yes, I've heard many things about him. He was also very brave, but I did ride more than twice as many miles as Paul Revere. That's awesome. How many militiamen did you have to inform that the British were coming to attack? It must have been a lot. Yes, 
There were a ton of people I had to warn. It took all night. I had to warn over 400 militiamen under my father's command. It was a tough job, but I got through it. Wow, that is a lot of people you had to warn. You must have made such a difference for our country. Did all of the soldiers that you warn, warned show up to battle? No, in fact, the militiamen were too late to save Danbury, but they were able to drive Britain's general, William Tryon, and his men to the Long Island Sound. All of my friends and neighbors congratulated me. I even received a message from General, Wa general George Washington commending my bravery. I really hope I helped the Continental Army. Oh, that is very exciting that you received a received a message from General Washington. Okay, last question for you, Sybil, and then you can get back to your duties. Were you worried at all that your horse wouldn't make it the whole way? Yes, at times the horse looked, looked like he would just collapse on the ground. I'm so happy that my horse made it that far. Thank you so much for letting us interview you. Like our anchor, Alzi said, maybe one day you will go down in history. Thank you so much for inviting me to this interview. Thank, Thank you. you. Back to Alzi. Wow, what an amazing story about Sybil Ludington. Up next, our field reporter Justin Laza Batista has a human interest story about our country's new flag. Here's Justin reporting. Hi, I'm Justin Lazo, and welcome to Liberty's Live at Five Human Interest Segment. We are here in Philadelphia with Betsy Ross. Mrs. Ross owns her own upholstery business here in Philadelphia, and she had a secret visit by a, a, a very important person about a year ago. Mrs. Ross, can you tell us about the secret visit? Hi, nice to meet you, Justin. Yes, I did have a secret visit. About a year ago, I had a secret meeting with a committee of three people, including General George Washington. The committee asked me to sew a, a flag for our country, our new country. Wow, what an honor it is to be asked to sew our country's new flag. Can you tell us a little bit about the design of the flag? Sure. They wanted the flag to have 13 stars and 13 stripes to represent the 13 American colonies. They suggested each star to have six points. Interesting. Did you, ma did you make any changes to the original design? Actually, I did. General, General Washington won each, each, each star to have six points, but I suggest each star to have five points because it's easier to make a five-point star than a six-point star. General Washington agreed and I went to work. I sewed the flag in my house in the evenings after work. Can you tell us what happened in June of this year? Yes, yes on June 14th, 1777, this flag that I sewed was adopted by Congress oh. as the official national flag. I was so excited to be part of something so special for our young country. Do you think General George Washington will use your flag in the near future? Now that Congress has approved it, I definitely think George Washington will use it. I hope I will get to make many more flags in my life. American flags in my life. As you know, the American Revolution is still going on. Do you think the Continental Army will win the war? Yes, I hope so. And I don't and I do believe that we will win. I don't want to be ruled by the British forever. It will be bad because they'll keep adding more taxes without proper representation in Parliament. Well, thank you, Betsy Ross, for letting me interview you. I'm Justin Lawson, Batista, reporting for Liberty, Liberty Live at Five. Back to Alzi. What a wonderful story of a woman who certainly made an important contribution to our young country. Thank you, Betsy Ross. Up next, we have Aubrey Morales to tell us about a special birthday that our young country celebrated this summer. Here is Aubrey reporting. I'm Aubrey Morales, reporting for Liberty's Live at Five. This summer, our country celebrated a very special birthday. On July 4th, 1777, we celebrated the one-year anniversary of Declaration of Independence being ratified. 
I'm here with Thomas Jefferson, a 33-year-old man from Shadwell, Virginia. Hello, Thomas. Thank you for joining Liberty's Live at Five. Can you tell us what exactly is the Declaration of Independence? The Declaration of Independence is an important document telling the British that the American colonies declare their freedom or independence from them. If we didn't declare our independence, we could be stuck like this forever. Wow, very cool. My next question is, how did the Declaration of Independence help the American colonies? It will help me and my country get our freedom from the British. Why was the Declaration of Independence written? It was written to make our Declaration of Independence from the British official. If we just said it out loud, it wouldn't be official. Did the Declaration of Independence lead you to safety or happiness? It did not because when Great Britain heard about the Declaration of Independence, they were angry about it. So they started a war against us and hopefully we win the war and get our independence. Wow, that was a big effect from one document. I hope the American colonists win this war too. Thomas, you were the person who actually wrote the Declaration of Independence. Isn't that right? Yes, that is correct. I was working on a committee with John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Robert Livingston, and Roger Sherman to discuss what would be written. The committee decided that one person would write the document while the rest would give him advice on what to write. John Adams decided that I should write it because I was the best writer on the committee. That is really interesting, Thomas. Can you tell our audience an overview of what it says? In the Declaration, I started out by writing about people's rights and what the government should, should and should not do. This part of the Declaration is called the Preamble. Then I listed specific bad things that the British government did to the colonies. I said that these included putting people in jail with no reason, making taxes that were too high, and not respecting people who lived in the colonies. Thank you, Thomas, for explaining all of this to our audience. Can you read your favorite part of the Declaration of Independence, please? Sure, the preamble is my favorite part. It says we hold truth, these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Wow, what powerful words, Thomas. I bet these words will be special for generations to come. Thank you, jo thank you for joining us today. I'm Aubrey Morales, reporting for Liberty's Live at Five. Now back to Alizy. Happy one year birthday to the United States of America. I bet July 4th will be celebrated with fireworks and parades for hundreds of years to come. Up next, we have a report from the battlefield. Here is Carrie Bliss with General George Washington reporting from the Battle of Germantown. I'm Carrie Bliss reporting for Liberty's Live at Five. I am here with General George Washington, Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army, and we are here at the Battle of Germantown, which is taking place near Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. General, can you tell our viewers how the battle is going? Not good. We lost the battle. We didn't have enough power. We were running out of supplies. Our men fought so hard, and we tried to win but the British had more supplies and more power than us. Sadly, we lost 152 fine soldiers during this battle. General Washington, I am so sorry to hear this news. It is just terrible that so many of your soldiers died. I hope that the Battle of Saratoga will be a better battle for the American colonies than the Battle of Germantown. We have a great general named Horatio Gates leading us in Saratoga, so that will hopefully give us the win at the Battle of Saratoga. Yes, General Gates is a very skilled general, so we hope for a different outcome in that battle. Moving on, why did you want to be Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army, General? I wanted to be Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army because I didn't want to be taxed anymore. 
and John Hancock thought I would be a good commander in chief because of my experience in the military. He was definitely right about you, General Washington. I bet something in your childhood has led you to this important position. Can you tell us about your childhood? When I was a child, I learned how to run a tobacco farm. My father died when I was 11 years old, and my half-brother let me live with him in Mount Vernon. He taught me how to be a land surveyor. He died when I was 20 years old. That is very sad, General Washington. What did you do after your brother died? Soon after my brother died, I fought as a soldier in the French and Indian War, which was Great Britain's fight with France over the Ohio River Valley Territory. After the war, I returned to Virginia to work as a farmer. Did your experience as a soldier in the French and Indian War help you when you joined the Continental Army? Yes, it helped me lead the Continental Army. I knew how to be a soldier and how to plan successful battles. That sounds like a good experience to prepare you to be a commander-in-chief. What did you do after the French and Indian War was over? After the French and Indian War was over, Virginians, Virginians elected me to be their colonial government. Wow, from soldier to politician. Did your time as a politician help you as well? Yes, Carrie, that experience helped me as well. As a government official, I spoke out against unfair laws such as high taxes. I became very passionate about the American colonists fighting for their independence, and this passion also helped me be a successful commander in chief. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today, General Washington. I know I speak for our viewers as well when I say stay safe out on the battlefields and bring home a victory for the American people. Thank you, Carrie. I will try my best. That's all for me. I'm Carrie Blitz reporting for Liberty's Live at 5. Back to the studio. Thank you, Carrie and General Washington, for your interview. Well, unfortunately, the battle of Germantown did not end well for General Washington and the Continental Army. Hopefully, the Battle of Saratoga, which is going on right now in upstate New York, is going better. Let's take a break from our broadcast for a commercial sponsored by the Sons and Daughters of Liberty. Here are Rosalie uh, Spadinata and Gabriel Georgiou. Please come to the Sons and Daughters of Liberty meeting. I am Rosalie Spadinata and I am part of the Daughters of Liberty. The Daughters of Liberty is a group of women working together to stop the British. We want the American colonies to be free from the British rule. I am Gabriel Georgiou, and I am part of the Sons of Liberty. The Sons of Liberty is a group of men who are working together to stop the British as well. We want the American colonies to be our own country. We need to stop the British. They keep imposing unfair taxes on the colonists. Well, first we need more people to join our, or, or, our organization. That's a great idea, Gabriel. If we have more people join our, our meetings, we would be able to get more ideas on how we can win this war against the British. Our next meeting will be held on Thursday, October 20th, 1777, at 12 o'clock at the Green Dragon Tavern in Boston. Our meetings are held every Thursday. This week, Samuel Adams will be speaking at our meeting. Samuel Adams is a leader in a, the movement in the American Revolution. He is a big believer in the American colonists fighting for their freedom. Don't miss your opportunity to meet this famous and influential patriot in person. Next week, our guest speaker will be Paul Revere. He will tell us about his famous and heroic ride through Lex Lexington, Massachusetts to warn the colonists that the British were coming. Each week we have a different guest speaker join our group. Please attend our meetings. They ha are informative and inspiring. We need more people in our group so we have a better chance of defeating the British. Please, Please attend, attend the our Sons and Daughters, and Daughters of Liberty meetings. Now back, back to Liberty's Live at five. 5. Thank you to Rosa and Gabriel, to all our viewers. Please consider 
joining the Sons and Daughters of Liberty to help fight for freedom. Up next, we are going to hear from an amazing, an amazing musician who has been playing for the Continental Army to help keep up their spirits on this difficult war. Here is Mrs. Baez. Beautiful job, Ms. Baez. I'm sure your music is doing so much to lift the spirits of the men fighting for our liberty. Thank you for all you are doing. Breaking news! I'm over here to sing, and I'm reporting from the battlefield of the Battle of Saratoga. The battle just ended, and the Americans won. We will be interviewing a American. General Horatio Gates for more information on the battle. Hello General Gates. Thank you for joining us today. Congratulations on winning this very important battle. Thank you, Abby. We are very excited to have won this battle. Can you tell our viewers how exactly did you win the Battle of Saratoga? Well, we, we won because of a combination of good luck and good skill. First General Burgoyne's troops reduced, reduced during the Battle of Bennington, making him have less troops and making it easier for us to win. We also defeated Colonial St. Ledger's army at the Battle of Fort Stanwix. Finally, General Howe's army did not go north like Burgoyne's asked him to. Instead, he decided to attack and occupy Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So as you can see, we had a good luck and good skill. So General Gates, how many troops did you have during the Battle of Saratoga? Did you outnumber the British? Our army had 15,000 troops. The British only had 5,000 troops because the British troops were reduced during the Battle of Bennington. I bet because of your victory, we could convince other countries to join the Continental Army fight against the British. We could probably even win this war with a little help. Yes, I agree, Abby. If the Continental Army received a little foreign aid, we would have a really good chance of winning this war. I know that Benjamin Franklin is working on getting us some help from another country. I really hope Benjamin Franklin is successful. General Gates, thank you so much for joining Liberty Lives at Five. Good luck to you and your men during the remainder of this war. Thank you, Avi. Wow, what wonderful news that the Continental Army has won such an important battle in the Revolutionary War. Thank you, Avi and General Gates for that breaking news. Let's hear from statesman and diplomat, Benjamin Franklin, on what this victory means for the American colonies. Hello, I'm Aaron Ramos reporting from Paris, France. I'm here with Benjamin Franklin, who is 70 years old and was born on January 17, 1706. Benjamin, would you mind telling us why you came here? Hello, everyone, and of course, I came here to convince the French to join the colonists in the Revolutionary War against the British. The French had some issues with the British since the French and Indian War, so I'm hoping they, are, they will join our war for the Americans. Do you think they will fight for the Americans now? Well, the French have not liked the British since the French and Indian War. I hope they will join the war, the Revolutionary War, to fight for the Americans. It will be a big help if they fight for the Americans. Were you scared to come here during a war? Yes, I was. I thought the British were going to find out that I asked the French to join the war for the Americans. Benjamin, what is your opinion on the war? Do you think that the Americans will win or that the British will win? 
Well, I think we have a better chance of winning the war if the French are fighting on our side. So we'll see what happens. I hope I can convince the French to join the war so we can win and form our own country. Mr. Franklin, what could be the most important key in convincing the French to join our fight? Well, Aaron, we received fantastic news this morning from America that could be the key for us to win the war. The Americans have won the Battle of Saratoga. This is a huge victory for the Continental Army. The French were sure, are surely going to fight now. Are you ready to fight with the French if they say yes? Yes, I am. They wouldn't help a losing team since we won the Battle of Saratoga. That might persuade the French that we can win the war, and maybe they will help us. The Battle of Saratoga was such an important battle for us to win. What is your best argument to convince the French that they should join the Americans? Well, we won the Battle of Saratoga, so that might prove we are not a losing team. Thank you for joining us today and answering my questions, Mr. Franklin. You're welcome, Aaron. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Franklin. I just have received a message for you. <gasps> More great news, Aaron. I just got a message from the French. They heard that the Americans won the Battle of Saratoga. They d have decided to join the Continental Army and help us fight against the British. Wonderful news! I really hope we could beat the British now. This is awesome. I'm so glad that the French decided to help the Americans. What a positive way to end our interview. I'm Aaron Ramos reporting for Liberty's Live at 5. Now back to Alizé! Patriots, you heard it right here that winning the Battle of Saratoga could be the turning point of the American Revolution. Now, with help from France, the Patriots could win freedom for our young country. Stay tuned for our next broadcast of Liberty's Live at 5 to learn more about the colonists' fight for freedom. That's all from us. I'm Alice Lorena Cazada. Have a great night and be safe out there.